A reef I can describe is the second earth. It's like an underwater forest. It's alive and the coral is like the lungs of the underwater world. You hear talk about trees, but most of our oxygen comes from the ocean. It's critical to life on this planet. Coral reefs are most threatened ecosystem worldwide. You know, a lot of people think that they're plants or maybe even rocks, but in fact, they're actually animals. They are most vulnerable to climate change. It's like a healthy blood cell that needs to be really clean and healthy for the whole body to be healthy. You know, it was once a thriving ecosystem, and today the system's sick. And this is a global problem. There are corals that are suffering, and the coastal communities that depend upon those reefs are suffering. Right now, we have to find solutions. If you're a pessimist, if you don't believe in human ingenuity, there can be a reality that by the end of the century, the majority of the world's coral reefs will be gone. A reef is our home. As a community and living on shore, the foods come from the reef. Normally we go out to the sea every day. For us, it's one big ecosystem. There is a lot of knowledge behind building a relationship with the sea. About nine years ago, I started a Fiji Girl Surfing Clinic to mentor and create a space for young girls so that they look at the ocean as a place that they want to preserve and protect. I actually heard about Victor through a friend. I invited him to my last girl surf clinic, take our girls snorkeling and talk about his initiatives. I see people headed out to the reef in front of my office every day, looking for food. I have people walking by and dropping fish for my granddaughter on their way back. That's all a part of the culture, sharing what we have. So I ended up first in Fiji here as a Peace Corps volunteer in 1995. After finishing graduate school, I was looking for a way to be able to contribute more meaningfully to marine conservation. What I really liked was the sense of resource ownership by indigenous tribes. Eleven years ago, there were plenty of fish. It changed a lot from that time. And now we're trying to maintain and sustain our reef. And I even teach my son how to do it, how to preserve your reef. And so I gave my heart to it. So we come to find the most heat-tolerant corals, promoting resilience against climate impacts and help them be more reproductively successful. It's a big process and we need everybody. We need every hand to save the reef. I grew up around the ocean and salt water's in my blood. Through the years, I've seen places fundamentally change. Forests are gone, beaches are gone, coral reefs are bleached out. That should be a gigantic wake-up call. We need to start doing things faster, better, in a more collective way. Sea Trees kickstarts global regeneration of marine coastal ecosystems by collaborating with local communities. We're giving them tools that they've never had before and we're connecting them with scientists from around the world. Sea Trees works with over 20 project partners worldwide. We put the power back in the hands of people to create change. And the way that we actually heard about Reef Explorer was by connecting with Hannah Bennett. They were keen on wanting to support a coral project here in Fiji, and it really complemented what I was doing already.
we go out, take some cement, mix with sand, like baking like with buns. Then we plant them on the dead coals or some hard bottom. We've planted close to 100,000 corals now from the time that we began. Well, coral restoration is really just one of the many tools in the toolbox. Climate change is a problem that we can't manage locally. When I watch a bleaching event kill, you know, half the corals there, it hurts, it hurts me. Oh, it's been a labor of love, it's been a big part of my life. Most of the populations have this disconnect because it's an ecosystem that they just never encounter. If people can't see it, then how can you ask them to save it? We're looking for science partners who've been specializing in creating photogrammetry maps so that you can actually show people who aren't underwater what's happening. Will corals be vibrant in 10 years? Will corals be vibrant in 100 years? That decision's up to us. Our group here at Scripps is spending a lot of time trying to image our coastal ecosystems. We're trying to understand the foundations of corals so we can support these organisms to try to survive. Otherwise, we're watching a system go extinct. And I don't think any of us are prepared to accept defeat that way. These corals have been around for centuries and some for millennia. To watch coastal ecosystems die has been a really challenging set of years for me. Since I was a child, when I got an opportunity to spend some time in the ocean, the more I dug, I saw that there were problems that need to be solved. Imagery is providing us an opportunity to see corals, to give those corals more time to talk to us, for us to be able to listen to it. This procedure is creating a three-dimensional model of a landscape so we can study them. We can have conversations and then be able to look at that, interact with it, without a regulator in our mouth, a snorkel, or water all around us. The underwater world is effectively hidden for most people. If we can see where these solutions exist, we can find ways to assist nature and find ways to accelerate preservation, management, and restoration. The foundations of us creating a 3D model of an underwater environment, it all begins with capturing photographs. To do that, we can't just take one large format photograph. We have to get close to the bottom and take one photograph, another photograph, and another photograph. And we have to put all those photographs together. And so they took two cameras. It's like a six meter by eight meter area. They took 25,000 images that went into making this to get this level of detail. As much as it seems straightforward for many of us today, underwater photography has not been that simple for very long. It was a game changer when we had digital photography, but it still involves that complication of a big camera in a big housing and putting a very valuable resource underwater. Mobile devices provide us that democratized access to imaging. By just making the tools of image capture and image sharing more available, we go from maybe tens or hundreds of observers to millions. And now that is a game changer. As we start to employ more underwater photography to create 3D models, we have to be conscious of the challenges because the deeper you go in the ocean, the less and less light there is. It turns out the ocean's a hard place to map. I was inspired by the efforts of the Fijian people to restore the coral reefs. I'm a camera developer, but I'm also a scuba diver, and I've taken a lot of pictures on my dives. But getting better pictures when shooting underwater was another matter. 
Due to the nature of the ocean, long wavelength red light can't penetrate deep into the water. So it may appear bluer than it actually is, and the photos blur due to the movement. As not all people working on coral reef conservation are camera experts, we concluded that we needed to develop a new model that was easier to handle, to provide quality colors and images. We developed white balance settings that optimize color correction to address the challenges of underwater photography. Since everything appears blue underwater, we adjusted the camera's colors to bring out the natural reds, yellows, and greens of the coral reefs. Finally, we added automated interval shooting capabilities without an app, ensuring that divers have all the features they need in the main camera. Through these sensor optimizations, we wanted to provide taking quality coral reef photos without having to use expensive and heavy DSLR cameras. If you want to help save coral reefs, you need to dive in. If we each play a role in what we do best, it's the small actions that matter. We're uniquely positioned to equip researchers with high-quality, lightweight camera that allows them to more effectively monitor coral reefs. Make it become a purposeful technology, amplifying some of the good work that is already being done. It's so cool to be able to work with engineers to actually see and test what they've been able to do with the camera. So having that ocean mode that automatically adjusts the colors is a powerful tool. And a more detail allows you to create better textures of what's on the bottom. Photogrammetry allows us to create 3D models using software to stitch photographs, have the images processed, and get this photogrammetry plot back. We can go back and actually extract data that we weren't thinking about when we went in the water. Survivorship of corals, growth rates of corals, impacts of bleaching, what died and what's left behind. So I think these technologies provide value of allowing people to, to see a landscape that they wouldn't otherwise see. Darwin, one of our greatest scientists, had pen and paper and eyeballs. And now we use sets of instruments that can collect crazy data. And that's where the sort of alliance comes together. This is starting to make this technology be more reachable by more practitioners. We have this opportunity to build collaborations with colleagues who are these marine advocates globally. There can be a research group in one geography taking photographs, and we can be partners in some of these efforts. What was hidden is now going to come out in full force. And you kind of take it for granted that it's always going to be there. And democratizing technology can lead to a bigger impact for all. There's like this giant power waiting to be unleashed. So the reef maybe is bringing us together. We're trying to start a movement to invite people in to become part of the solution. I see that as an overwhelming opportunity. You have so many brains who are prepared to get engaged. It starts with the younger generations. To me, is how we're building the future leaders and the future decision makers. Thinking about my children and grandchildren and what will be here on the reef for them. 
I'm doing it for the future generations and not for myself. Nonda Dakau, Nakaro Nonda Karnonda Valley.